Brooklyn's historic The Black Lady Theater is now taking bookings. Host your next birthday party, concert, networking event, baby or bridal shower, wedding, art show, gala, corporate event, live stage play, audition, and so much more at the one and only The Black Lady Theater. Mention code GODCAST for 15% off your rental fee. Code good for the first time customers only. Valid for a limited time. Call 718-771-0900 to book your event today. Peace. Today is Sunday, October 27th. Make it today's man. Wisdom God, all being born to born. That's right. Your wise words show and prove you are God. Make your godliness manifest and born into this universe. Peace. Okay, so y'all, so y'all, y'all, uh, Eric Sadler, Hank, yourself, Chuck. now, Chuck, Chuck, now you're working on Nation of Millions. Or no, no, no. The first record y'all came with was um, Rebel Without a Pulse. Rebel Without a Pulse. Mm. Rebel yeah. Without a Pulse. Ooh. Yeah. Like, yes. can I just... <laughs> <laughs> Brothers and sisters! <laughs> Um, Ooh, like y'all were gods. Too. And now, did we do Man. this in Five Ten Franklin Street? We did everything in Five Ten. Okay. So, because my mom's kicked us out the crib. <laughs> she, I was the shit out. So, like, what would you say everybody's job? Because that sounds like a collage. The wildness sounds like a collage, and I feel like everybody had their assignment. You know what I mean? Maybe somebody was the master at the blends. Somebody was the one that really knew a lot about certain records and, and like, let me go get these right and try this record. And, and then you might have the guy who's the instrumentation, the arrangement of everything. You know, tell me a little bit about that so, process and how did you get to that song and then use that as the yeah. template for everything else? So, once again, go back to the Eric B and Rock Kim. Chuck and I was on tour with the whole album. And they crushed us, but I know you got sold. So we're supposed to release another single. Um, but how that how that song became came to Eric was messing around, just came up. We would just have basic beats. You wouldn't get those songs like we wouldn't do those songs like that. Basic beat, drum, maybe a bass line, some you know some crazy program. That was it. Chuck would hear it and be like, okay. I got it. So when he was on the road, we had, we was coming up the release of uh, 98, You're Gonna Get Yours. So, but we had no other song. And at the same time, the, um, we had some money left over, you know, you, you have money left in your over budget. in your budget mm -hmm. to do an unreleased because the album was so old that we figured that we needed something new. So by Eric B and Rakim taking, I know you got soul. Eric was like, "Yo, I, I think I got a beat. Just send." Music. And then that and was also a blend with the boom, 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 boom. I forget so, what the name of that is, um, but uh, but that, that was the joint yeah, that we was so, cutting so up. Because as a DJ, I was like, yeah. "Oh, that was interesting yeah. how they blended I was these blending. two. So when we would send stuff, send stuff to Chuck while he's on the road, like you know, I don't know how we were sending it, but he would get it. Um, so then, when he finished, he came back and said, yo, I think I got something. So before the release of the album, we went into the studio and put it down. So we just dropped the basic track. Chuck and this is for pause. Rebel Without a Pause? Rebel Without a Pause. Mm -hmm. okay. Rebel Without a Pause. And so we do tons of post-production. Everybody think it's like we make the track like that. No, we don't know when it's going to be. Ah. We just, Chuck mm -hmm. drops his lyrics, we got his parts, and we build it as it goes. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. That's that's ninety percent of the bar score. Mm. We are a post production team. Mm. And so with, within within that, okay. 
we're doing stuff that's unconventional. Like we're doing spot erasing because we might want to erase the section and we have the engineers and okay, we need to take this section out. Because you, you got 24 tracks. Right. You ain't got like what everybody got now. So we take and we have the engineer precisely erase what we can do with digital editing now. We was doing that with tape. Wow. Wow. So when we do that, and then we will precisely practice punching in parts. Wow. Uh, Yo, we was killing engineers. We were burning out engineers in like days. Talking about four fingers we sometimes four on fingers. a... Yo, hang on. Was, and go! We was killing them. So as things go on, I will be searching for sample parts because you got to understand, we're still DJs and our record collection is, is massive. intensive mm. in the early 80s. Like it was like, yo, we had, I got a picture, we had a room full of just like crates stacked up. So we got all of that. We going through that because being in record pools, we're just finding the right parts. This just took a long time, but we got efficient at it. The, the Hang right on, part for, we'll go through the right song and figure out the right part for that section. And yo, we'll go through tons of, tons of samples. Sometimes we'll come back to the James Brown, we'll find another section that nobody even thought about using, and then we just start taking all the people's shit. Like, we didn't care. Mm. It was like, whatever worked, and then Eric was the one that kept us in key. Ah. So, so he'd keep you in key with the different samples yes. that you're using. We would, we would kind of go out of it a little bit, but it still had to stay in somewhat key. Now we got pitch shifting, time, time stretching. You right. That shit on the fly now. We was yeah. doing that back then. Wow. Manually. And manually with tape. That's crazy. Wow. We got a mic. We don't have a microphone out there right now. What was your question? Okay, my name is Nigel Green, and I blame you for reprogramming my <laughs> person. Um, when y'all was digging for records for samples back then in Colts, did you have to be conscious minded to document what you were sampling? No, nah, man. You wasn't even so clearing samples. Wasn't Later sure. on, yeah, that wasn't because that wasn't that world wasn't even invented then. Like you clear, stuff. we we didn't have to worry about that. Mm. It, it's not until you know the artists that would hear their stuff right. would hear their stuff and be like, "Yo, wait a minute, that's my shit." They'll <laughs> hear a snap, snip, uh, snippet of it. Who was the most friendly? I'm sorry. Who was the most friendly um, when they, they wanted to address like a sample issue? Do you feel was most friendly to? George Clinton, mm. you know, uh, yeah, James know. James came around, but he was a little, little uh, but George understood, <laughs> you know. So I, you know so he, was, he was like, he'll be like, oh, yo, 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 y'all just, he was, at the minute, he was really, y'all doing that with my stuff? So, but I think George Clinton was the easiest. We stayed away from Larry Blackman because he couldn't stand us. I mean, we couldn't stand From right. Cameo? Mm. Yeah, you stayed away from that because I wanted to use Rigor Mortis. Mm. Uh, oh, Rick and Morty, And you know, Elijah Green, you sound a lot like a fact checker rage. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway. Um, yeah, it, it is. I just um, want you to know that y'all are the reason why I stopped watching soap operas because of the song. She watched Channel Zero. <laughs> she watched Channel Zero. Damn it now. I, 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 I used yeah. to. Like clockwork, I used to have my VCR set to come home and watch General Hospital, One Life to Live. Yeah, that's my, that your story. All my children. Watch that story. I was watching that too. So I want to know a little bit about. I so, stopped because so, so, of that song. Bring me into a studio session, you know, at this time at 510 Franklin because now I know you got uh, I know you got Griff you know <laughs> on the set very stern and very serious so I'm assuming it wasn't like my sessions where there'd be a lot of blood smoke and no, broads no, all no, around we was, I mean um, yeah, I, I did my thing but we didn't do that in the studio right you know just how we were you know we we didn't work like that and you know I might at that time smoke a little something to drink those, but we wasn't like I remember, oh man, I got one when I was spaced out in my mind when I came up with the track with Terry on. Really? Wow. Yeah. Terry Dome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I know the beginning. Out of your I, mind. Know, I know the beginning of Terry Dome, that one song. <laughs> boom, boom, Wait, boom, that boom, sounds like a, a nigga could have been on some but, dust. I mean, that's some boom, boom, V shit. But, but yeah, but that, all that's post production. Line. I'm just talking about the initial track. 
Right. So we have initial track, and then what y'all hear afterwards is hours of putting samples and taking out all that shit. Or we'll put in something that's hot, and we'll be like, next day you hear, you know, next day you hear, like, nah, that's nah. Shit is nah, take that out, and then we'll we'll keep going like that. Wow. You know. And y'all had a collective. Like, y'all would collectively kind of feel that way? Collectively kind of feel that way. Like, you know, yeah, you're right, that is whack. Let's change and I, it. I mean, I'll go back to Terra Zone. So I'm working on it, and it's, it's there, so we find the Temptation Psychedelic Shack sample. Now, you know, I'm playing that, and I'm, my rhythm and time was all fucked up. This is whack. And, I, and I'm the DJ in the motherfucker coming up. I had the best rhythm out of everybody. I was just whack for that part. Chuck said, well, let me fuck with it. I said, OK. That's all Chuck. Mm. Mm. Wow. Because his rhythm was. So we went on whoever had the rhythm. Um, one of the joints. Um, Did uh, Flav ever have yeah, the rhythm? Yeah, Flav had crazy. Because Flav, I know Flav, Flav plays had, mad instruments. Flav, Flav can play three different When he came to the studio, he had crazy rhythm. Um, we took Funky Drummer for um, I bring the noise. Uh, That's that instrumental, right? But to, yeah, but no, we used it. We used funky drum like nine times. Um, uh, bring the noise. Right. Right. Uh, was it bring? No, I'm sorry. Rebel out of pulse. Never yeah. better than back because yeah. the brother so, is madder so, yeah. than madder. So what happened was we had Chung King. You know, our Chung King studio mm -hmm. was so original Chung the, King. The original, the original House of Metal. Mm -hmm. So and then and he had a. Um, uh, Steve Etna had a Publisson sample that was a simple Publisson that you could do some pictures, but it's sample too. But the problem was, every time I, once again, I'm supposed to be the main motherfucker, I'm trying to lock in the overlay, the funky drummer, and my timing is just shitty. Mm. Like, just whack! <laughs> Flavor said, man, move out the way, I got this. That's him making that shit pop like that. Mm. Damn. That motherfucker is like, when we can get him to focus, right. he's incredible. <laughs> he's incredible. But getting him to focus just, is the that's fucking... That's the part. That's the part, man. He's, he's just not... He's a rebel in his own mind. Flavor. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a rebel in his own mind. Exactly right. Ice cube. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, so let's we, move on a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to dwell, because I, I could dwell forever. Do it, I was say, I got just on this album, license. just on this album, because right. I want to talk about uh, Don't Believe the Hype, which, which was Man, one of the most shit, simplistically, man. brilliantly put together songs yeah. that I ever heard, like Substitution with the M. Mm -hmm. Like, like the, again, the hypnotic sound and the M. See, and that was, and, and, like, and that was, once again. <laughs> your timing was, was fucked up. My timing was, <laughs> no, my, my timing was kind of like weird. But Chuck had heard something and he was, now he was raggedy. So what we had to do, that's when we had the, the samplers. We caught a part and then we sampled it. Okay. And so now we freeze it. Right. But everything was live turntable. We'll go Most of the time, Most everything the time, was live turntables. With live turntables, turn tables, then we'll go right into the sample and be caught what we wanted. See, now that's, that, that reminds me because it's sad. Dr. Dre said he was doing a lot of live turntable stuff, yeah, too. Because where we thought it was samples, but they was actually doing yeah, DJ yeah. blends We were doing DJ like blends that. on top wow. of it because from DJing, you get a lot of shit. And we were just throwing in any kind of shit. Okay, so now you go. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. I got one more public enemy question. Go ahead. I know you, you got so much production I right know, now, but I got crazy. one more public enemy question. Were you, as a producer, like not being the one doing the rapping, were you personally ever concerned or fearful of like the political backlash? Like, were you ever concerned with, about your personal safety because of like. No. <laughs> okay. No. We didn't care. We, we knew. What one, we knew the angle we was coming in, nobody else was doing it besides KRS one. But the thing between us and him after Scott died, it's a group of us against him. Now he was holding his own, but we coming in with we got Griff giving Chuck information, we grabbing information from this, highlights from stuff. We had a lot of people coming in still. We had a lot of people coming in with concepts and ideas. And, the, and the, when y'all had the S1Ws when I first saw y'all and y'all had the Uzis? We had that. And oh, that was, my and that was God. the militant side of us. Um, look, 
one thing about growing up on Long Island. So you were not concerned with races no. showing up at the no, shows trying no, to set it yeah, off. That's what then. we wanted. We actually wanted. I love it. I love it. Right. You know, I went to private school, so I understood going to school with white kids and all that, the, the level of being privileged. I knew, I knew that from seventh and eighth grade. So what happened was, but at that same time, we had this program at, at Hofstra University called the Afro-American Studies. That was the late 60s going into the, up to the mid-70s. Mm. So we, we learned, all of us went there because they took all the black kids from our Nassau County area and sent them there for summer school. So, so you have massive heights with this, you know, nation of millions that hold us back. You know, surprisingly, as black as your message is, white people fucking loved y'all. Yeah. 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 It was fucking oh, yeah. retarded yeah. Yeah. to like you see a public enemy show and so yeah. many white, white people would be there that it was like it was, unbelievable. We did a we did a New Year's Eve party at the world. I'm like, do they not understand what these guys crazy. are talking about? But, but this is crazy. We did a New Year's Eve party at the World, and I'm thinking that shit's gonna be like 99% yeah. black. This is downtown Manhattan. Right. That shit was hard. We can count the black people that was in there. Because they might have priced us out, though. You sometimes they well, do well, shit yeah, like they that. Did that. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? But Tickets fact, was 150. dollars But the fact Why that they say I'ma pay it. But the fact that it was so packed. Right. For that at that time. For Manhattan, fuck me up. Yeah. Wow. So, so listen, you do all of that. Now it's like, oh, other motherfuckers want the sauce. And the first smart motherfucker to, to step to y'all is Ice Cube. And then you deliver <laughs> one of his greatest albums, which is the America's most wanted album. Of the America, America, K -K -K. Now, now, Ice Cube Woo! is one of my favorite artists at one point. And two of his favorite albums are America's Most Wanted and Death Certificate. Damn right. Yeah. For Damn. me. Yeah. Death Certificate. Um, but America's Most Wanted, what y'all did with that, <laughs> it was so genius because you, you still gave him his Cali-like identity Inside it, but still brought that bomb squad the noise. technique still brought the noise. <laughs> to the shit. Like, like, that, what the fuck was that all about? <laughs> well, that's because we was kind of modest as being, though we, we never really wanted to like like that. It always was about the artist. So we Ice Cube came. He he lived on Long Island for about two months, mm. and you know we just had him there back and forth. My brother said, here, go in that room and get your album together. And that was the room we keep all the records in. Mm -hmm. So he just went in. And, and he, the one thing about Ice Cube, man, was organized. He knew what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So he came with eight composition notebooks. And all we did was we liked that verse. And we want to match that verse with this verse out of that song. So we was actually putting the song together. And Doing and what y'all do. Y'all are post pasters we're, we're, and cutting we're, pasters. Cutting, we're cutting pasters. Before cutting pasting before was cutting popular. Pasting, exactly. We did that a lot with Chuck. Mm. He didn't write a bunch of shit. We just take shit and did a song or formulate. Mm. So we had that understanding. So with Ice Cube, and we wasn't there actually supposed to do his album. Sam Seven was supposed to do it. Mm. So he just, I just did third base his first single. I was going to say, so yeah, I just third did third base. base and, and then Sam Seven was a hot little motherfucking kid running through Def Jam. And Ice Cube went to see him. Problem was, Sam never showed up. We mm. was working on Tapes, uh, tapes of Nation. And we had got the burn Hollywood burn, mm. and Chuck Big Daddy. stumbled across Ice Cube in the lobby. He said, yo, what you doing here? He said, yo, I've left them, and I'm doing my joint. He said, Chuck said, well, I got a, you know, I got a song you can start this shit off on. We talked about burn Hollywood burn. Cube was like, I'm down. And after he left the session, after he left our session, he, he said, I want y'all to do my yeah, whole that's shit. It. That's it. And that was that simple. Nice. Wow. So, so, so now another album. Another hip hop classic, which a lot of people, because you're so modest and humble, <laughs> didn't know necessarily that you guys produced this album, was The Great Adventures of Slick Rick. Jesus. Come on! Wow! How many times is Lightning gonna strike? Wow! Like, like, like. And then Montel Jordan it would be just enough, takes. To, it would be enough to fight the, the lightning strikes with, 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 with Public Enemy. 
Then you strike it again with, with, with Ice Cube. But now to strike lightning a third time with Slick Rick, who was like, you know, the hottest thing since sliced bread at, yeah. at that moment. Like, how did that fall into your laps? And how did, what was the approach? See, Producing all, all of that. I'm, I'm mostly in the studio. And I'm, none of these yeah. records sound like each other either. Yeah. At all. None yeah. of them sound like each other. And At all. That was the whole key to us. Mm. So my brother's always in the Def Jam office and all that. And after treated like a prostitute, really nobody wanted to deal with Slick. Really? Nobody wanted to produce them. I think Jay did the After that like, song, why? I, 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 that was on the street. Well, well, we, we love that song. I loved it on I the street. I love that street. But working with him, nobody wanted to go in the street to work with him. Oh. So my brother said, well, I'm going in with him. Now, mind you, we just, we did some joints with him. We just gave Rick that structure. But he knew what he wanted to do. I'm going to be straight. A lot of cats I did, that early part of him, fucking me up because when he did like Indian girl and children's stories and all that shit it was like he was just and I've never seen this before rapper he'll rap and then he'll stop make a break right and then pick up like he never stopped and we're like what is he we're sitting there and, and then he's gonna come he's back like, and fill yeah, it yeah we're like what are you doing right he's coming back and filling it in and you're like oh shit and it now creates a new somebody, smoothness. Nobody do that. Nobody does oh, that. Oh, he was one of the, he might have been the yeah, first one to do that. that. Do that. I've yeah. seen nobody do that, but watching him fill that picture in, you just sit back and like, oh. Oh, he's, oh, uh, he's yeah, like, let me leave him alone. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. And yeah. The stuff that we did, we'll give him like, okay, we'll do this. All right, we got that. And we'll come in, we'll mix it, and we, yo, we edit him up and make him sound right. And then Chuck gave him the concept of the Great Avengers of Slick Rick. Mm. Mm. Look at that. Okay. Oh, we was doing that with a lot of people, man, giving them their whole concert. Like, girl, this is your concert. Ice Cube was the only one that had his own concert. Mm. We just, he just had nobody to straighten it out. Mm, mm, mm. But the greatest vengeance of Slick Rick was that, and then your man B.O.B. took that shit. Remember B.O.B.? Bob, B.O.B.? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. he, took, he took the same concert. Mm -hmm. Of what? Of B.O.B. Oh, right. And he did, and took this, this pose he Slick Rick did. Mm. That one down here? That's the shit he did with Bruno Mars. Oh, shut up. So let me ask you something. <laughs> did you feel at the time, now this is maybe rewinding a little bit, bit back, but did you feel at the time that NWA was being presented as the anti-public enemy, as a lot of people state? No. A lot of people was wrong with that. Talk to me. They saw it from their perspective where they lived at. Mm. We was just serving from the perspective that we lived at on Long Island. Mm. They was the same. And see, people think it was like because we kind of came out first, we did our thing, and then Dre came along and did his thing behind us. Nah, they was, they was anti. Very much in the style. It was in the style. That yeah, y'all. It, it was in the style. Mm -hmm. It was in the style of what we did. But I didn't look, I didn't look, me personally, I always see the other side. Because... I had to notice that when I went out to LA, it was all back then, it was a whole different lifestyle than what we was doing. And like, and like I said, we're coming from a Long Island perspective, which black people were living in sections. Right, but a lot of people will say that the industry, maybe not even NWA. I, you, you, you mean like, okay, because how, they were being so informative and right. educational. And, and NWA then, comes with the, the gangster, gangster and the killing. You know, and the, killing, yeah, and the dis disrespecting women type of vibe. And, and when the industry found that they can sell that much easier than what y'all were given, they steered the industry more down that NWA road well, and tried yeah. to quell the, 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 the public enemies of the world. The yeah. knowledge. You understand well, what I'm yeah, saying? That, well, from, now you're going to take it, I took it from an art perspective. Right. Now we're going to take it from a political perspective. Yes, you are right. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was, see, I, I look at things in two worlds. Right. I let a person express the artist, articulate or artist freedom. Right. If that's what you want to do, but you better express it in the best way you can. But then it backfired on them but, when they made fuck the police. <laughs> Yes, not, not, no, no, not backfired on NWA, oh, backfired oh, on the industry. Oh, industry. Right, on yeah. The industry. Yeah. 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 Hey, we didn't mean y'all. Yeah. 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 So, like, oh, wait, y'all on that shit yeah. too? Yeah. So, so, so I want to give you a chance before we get out of here, you know, 
tell the people what you got going on now. I know I came to see you <laughs> DJ yeah. not long ago. Ah, yeah. And <laughs> this man was playing some like Afro I, funk I, I, shit. I want you I, to produce my I album. I was like, yo, this is some D. He's, he's just on the cutting edge of everything. I, like, this shit was I, 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 lightning strike. And now, <laughs> and now, if you look fast forward, you got a lot of African artists yes. who are blowing up right now. I have a and 20th, I'm telling you, this was like two or three years ago, maybe. Album coming and up. this guy was playing a we, bunch of African music. Um, um, remember, he was in the yes, Meatpacking we, District. Yeah, yep. So, Meatpacking District. Yeah. So, I've always been into different styles of music. And then I started hanging out with the London Cats. And then when Dubstep was oh, from the London and perspective, I fuck with Dubstep. Mm. from the London perspective, right. not the Skrillex perspective. No, right. they Skrillex. took it from them. So everybody got like I know the origins of all this shit. Right. So yeah. what happens from that? Dubstep, I like yeah. Rusco. That's yes, the type of Rusko. Dubstep so I, had, I like. You know, yeah. um, um, Banger, yeah. uh, Code Nine, mm -hmm. um, my man Scream, Pinch, and all of them. Those were the original cats because they was drum and bass and they just went into another song. Drum right. And they came That's from, what I was trying. And, and what happens is when I've been traveling, I started to feel all those vibes. And I got that from my brother hanging out with a lot of them. So they was, you know, because when you, when you deal in that world, you know, it takes eight hours to go from London to Nigeria. Like, that's like going from here to Cleveland. But you mean, you're going through countries in a whole different zone. But got cats meshing together. So we've always been in that, what's next? Just like mm -hmm. our technology. You know, with our technology is making records, that's where a lot of the new technology of software comes from. So so what happens with that is I got we got into the Afro beats. Come on, that's always been there since Man on the Bank. You know, and, and, then, and, and, and then everybody, yeah, so everybody gets into that, and everybody gets into Fela, but then there's a whole nother style of that, you know, you got, you got, um, Evo Taylor that comes up out of that, you know, Tony Allen, the, Tony see, I, Allen, I, I'm, I'm Fela's really, I'm drummer, out the, the musicians that got down with him, right, did you fuck with so High Life, saying? High Life, yes, so yes. that, so when you get into that, and I'm always searching for what's different, what's still funky, what keeps you going. So when I get into that world, it's like, man, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm in another planet. Well, listen, we we about out of time. Could you, you tell the my people? Next album? <laughs> Could you tell 20th the people? 20th anniversary, April oh, okay. 2020. Okay, let's do that. I'm Could you wrong. tell the people oh, where? Oh, 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 I need that. I need that oh, line. Oh, 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 do, oh, do my album. Nigga. My contact is very simple. Any platform, just hit Key Shock. Only one in the world like that. Shock. Right. Sick. Sick. And, and let me say, stay for the record. That's a cool ass last name. It's Shock the sickest God. name ever. Shockley. I thought it was made Shock up. The hag. Shock the hag. <laughs> Yo, is my man from Here's Digital Underground thing. Shockley? Too? Everything we do has a story behind it. Mm. So it was my brother, Prep Hank, and we was DJing. You know, our, our real last names is kind of similar to that. Oh. So we took that from Clint Eastwood the Gump. The garment. Ben, ben Shockley. So he was President Hank Shockley. And so Chuck gave, Chuck gave me my name as a DJ, Wizzy KG. See, the KG came from Keith and Grip. Right. And I was known from that. But Chuck flipped it. He said, Keith, we're going to spell it like the way the Nightlighters did it. The Nightlighters had a song called KG. So I spell it K-J-E-E. -E. Oh. Okay. So everything comes from something that we do. And everything is done intentional. Dope. We ain't never did nothing. You ever do digital, digital, digital underground? Was it digital? Nothing was digital underground, right? Huh? We you appreciate you coming by, brother. Thank you so yeah. much. That was awesome. Oh, pleasure, man. Once Bye, again, we are gonna yes. work this out. Yes. Oh. Hey, hey, hey yes, for the United yes, Mean God cast. Yes, yes sir. sir. Thank you for watching. I'm Lord Jamal. I'm thinking, nigga. Godfrey.